Very good. Okay. All right. So what I understand you guys are interested in is maximizing your e-commerce exit. And we're starting from the standpoint of businesses under a million dollars in profit. Uh, they are selling physical products direct to consumers. And uh, the most important thing to maximizing your exit is selling as you're growing. So on the upswing of your, uh, your transaction, uh, we are looking to sell the business in the middle of growing month over month. So if you have a seasonal business and you've got certain months that sell higher than other months, uh, it's really important to take that into consideration uh, because the best possible premium you can get for your business is when both the top gross revenue and your net profit uh, are growing. Uh, if you've got a net margin over 25% uh, or over 30%, that's very, very desirable. So meaning if you sell a million dollars in gross sales and you're taking home $250,000 to $300,000, that's a sweet spot. That's really, really helpful. Um, you want to also make sure that your product concentration, uh, if you don't have a hero brand, what I mean by that is like if you're not selling like one or two or three things, uh, it, the more you can diversify your, uh, your sales with a variety of different products, uh, that will give you the edge over brands that are only selling two, three or four things at a time. That by no means is a deal breaker though. And in fact, there's contrary to that, there are certain companies that are looking for com that are looking for e-commerce stores that only sell, you know, three, four, five products, and and that's it. And that just happens to be a collection of them. That usually tends to be Amazon FBA stores. Uh, there's a bunch of companies that are buying Amazon FBA stores, and uh, they just they that that's just a model for them. And they can't, they they literally can't take on a company that has 50 products. They can only handle <laughs> like five or six or seven, and um, and that's it. That's the number one thing that you can do to get a maximum uh, exit value, the premium for your business. Now, some things that you can do to make your business ready for sale is have a domestic entity set up. So an LLC, S Corp, uh, C Corp, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but you want to have all of your, your revenue being deposited into a bank account that's associated with that entity. You don't want to have any personal or, or, bis or, or non-related business expenses in it. Just be really judicial about what, what is being spent out of that account. Fulfillment, manufacturing, customer service, you know, all that sort of stuff. Totally, those are related business expenses. But keep, you know, the, the, the other expenses to a minimum. And if you've got a bunch of like deals going, uh, just go ahead and set up a bank account. At least set up a bank account per uh, potential exit uh, asset. So if you've got two stores that are under one LLC, each of the stores needs to have its own bank account. Cost you an extra nine bucks a month at Wells Fargo, a Bank of America, and it'll make my life so much easier trying to sell your business. Um, please, please do that. If, if nothing else, that's that is absolutely critical. The next piece is file your tax returns and make sure they match those financial statements. Um, you need to have those monthly financial statements prepared by a bookkeeper. It needs to be in QuickBooks or Zero or some accounting system that takes you know all the information out of your your shopping cart or your payment processor. You know, dumps that into your uh, your QuickBooks file. Any of your expenses, all that sort of stuff. Uh, super, super important. Uh, need you to put that in a QuickBooks file so that we can show a buyer what the hell's going on with the business. Um, that's absolutely critical, uh, you know, for, and, and that's a non-negotiable. I can't even list a business that doesn't have some kind of financial statements uh, available to it because buyers will laugh us out of the room. I tell them this is how much it's making and this is the information that goes along with it. And they'll look at it. And that's like the, the same as in e-commerce. If you have a fuzzy photo of a ring light, like you're trying to sell a ring light and the photo is fuzzy or it's the wrong photo. It's a photo of a cat and you're trying to sell ring lights. It's a total non-negotiable. Uh, we are the laughing stock of M&A if we try to list a business without prepared financial statements. And it's not that expensive. A couple hundred bucks a month, you can get a bookkeeper to do it for you. Uh, your brand, the strength of your brand uh, is depends on how big your sale is. Uh, 
you know, a buyer will be more interested in a brand as it gets, as the, the deal size gets bigger, being a stronger brand, but we can sell, you know, brands that aren't, you know, super strong in terms of like the branding and, and that sort of stuff. But here's some things to think about. If you've got the ability to do this, it will help your multiple as well. Uh, increase your customer order, repeat order rate. If you can get any recurring revenue, that's super important. Uh, have great customer testimonials and reviews. Have trademarks. Trademark your brand name at least. If you've got like subcategories of products, you can go a little bit deeper and get some some distinction of your product lines as well. If you have something that you can get a patent on, get it, uh, even if it's just a design patent. And think about ways you can get a design patent. You know, take a bottle of water and put your your name on the side of it, and then like em embellish it or emboss it or something, and then get a design patent on that even though you can get this bottle of water from anywhere. But if you can get a design patent, that sets you apart from all the other folks that are out there. If you can get a utility patent, like maybe there's a little lever on the top of this thing. If you can you know, get a patent for that, that sets you like at the highest stage of, uh, of defensiveness for your brand uh, that people are interested in. If you're selling supplements, uh, if you go to the next phase of getting a custom formulation or you have like a unique formulation, that's also super valuable. Um, much more so than just a private label supplement right off the shelf. Uh, also, you know, having a repeatable and consistent customer acquisition strategy. So if your sales are all over the damn place and you, it's, you know, based on paid media or something and there's no like correlation or consistency for it, um, that's not as, as good as having every month just a little bit more growth, a little bit more, a little bit more growth. That's super important. The next thing you can do is make it easy for the buyer to acquire you. Propose a plan for growth. Like what would you do with the business if you were to keep it for three to five years? What, what marketplaces would you enter? If you're selling on Shopify, would you sell on Amazon? Would you sell on Walmart, Etsy, uh, eBay? Are there any other platforms you can sell on? Are there any other countries you can sell on? Put together just a, a roadmap. It's simple one page PowerPoint with here's what we're going to do, here's where we're going to sell, here's growth points for us, here's other products that we can sell as well. Like we're already selling, you know, this water cup, pretty soon we're going to sell one with a nipple on it that we can suck on or squeeze a sports bottle, stuff like that. Just make it easy for your, your, um, your potential, you know, the new partner, the new buyer to be able to have something that they can just go out to market with. Offer to stay on board for a while. Uh, give them, this is, absolutely critical when you're a million dollars and more in profit because private equity firms uh, and other you know larger entities don't have an operational team to take over your business the smaller size like under a million dollars it's probably going to be an owner operator who buys it uh, and they're going to step in your shoes and they're going to run what you're doing so that's where you want to think about okay what kind of um, uh, videos. Can you document what you're doing? Uh, what are the key performance indicators? What are the numbers that you're looking at in your shopping cart or on your, uh, your paid media? The things that you do day in and day out, you got to transfer that to somebody else if you want to get out of the deal eventually. Otherwise, you got you to hang around for a while. So transitioning the business is important. And try to get yourself out of being actively involved in acquiring the customer. If you're doing your own media buying and that sort of stuff, think about some agencies that you can bring on board that can take that part over because a new buyer is not going to know how to run Facebook ads, not going to know how to do anything on TikTok. They're not going to be reaching out to influencers on Instagram and trying to like wheel and deal and that sort of stuff. They just don't know how to do that. You also want to have your key vendors uh, you know, 3PL, so your fulfillment's outsourced, customer service is outsourced, your manufacturing, wherever you're getting the products from. If you're, if you're doing that internally, you, you got to figure out another option for that. Uh, I was just talking to somebody the other day, they do, they do their own mixing for a particular product. <laughs> a buyer's not going to want that. They're not going to try to staff up people to do uh, manufacturing of like a, a supplement and doing their own mixing and encapsulation and stuff. They don't want to bother with any of that. So very critical to outsource those things. So th those are some important parts that are going to increase the multiple of your business. Here's some things that are going to reduce the, the multiple of your business. These are things that are going to be playing against you. So if this is the case for your business, think about how you can undo this. Um, if you don't have monthly financial statements, make selling impossible. Yeah, we have to get financial statements. Uh, bookkeeper, CPA, profit and loss, balance sheet, 
every month it's updated, not quarterly, not annually. Don't tell me that you, you leave everything alone and then once a year you go and enter it all. Well, that stops now. As soon as you're getting ready to list your business, you're doing it monthly by the 10th of the month, every month. If you don't have any profit, you're not going to sell. Uh, an e-com business is a cash flow entity. It's, there's no real estate with it. There's no underlying asset. If you're not showing a profit, there's not a buyer that's going to be interested in it, at least not for any reasonable number. You might be able to get a, a discount on your inventory and sell your, you know, sell something for a reduction of what you have in inventory, but you need to be making profit. If you've got inconsistent sales or your sales are dropping, it makes it really hard to sell a business because the buyer is thinking, well, damn, if, if this guy can't you know, resurrect this business, how the hell am I going to do it? He's the founder and it's going down. I can't do this. So they're going to walk away. They're going to run, not walk away from those situations. If you've got poor customer reviews and testimonials, oftentimes what will happen is we won't even get a response from a buyer because they'll see the business that's listed. They'll go and Google the business. They're going to look for reviews. And if they see a bunch of like one stars, two stars on, on you know, Amazon or, or people saying this is a scam or that sort of stuff, they will, they'll never even respond. If you're under a year old, you're not really sellable either at, at like a, a decent multiple. You really need to get to about 12 months old. Um, if you're really, really high growth and you're at like eight or 10 months, you know, we can certainly start the conversation and get you ready, but you need to cross that one year mark to really start to attract attention. If your tax returns don't match your financial statements, people think that you're trying to defraud the government. You know, they think that you're trying to defraud everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure your tax statements are, are legit. They match. Like they don't want to, you know, get into a situation where they're going to have the government come in after them because they're acquiring all your assets. Um, if you don't have any way to defend yourself against competitors, like if it's really easy to rip you off, um, find some ways to distinguish yourself a little bit different uh, and, and start to work towards adding that into your mix. And it, like, again, like I said, you know, find some ways to, to get a, a design patent, which is basically whatever the hell it is that you're selling right now, but make some alteration to it, uh, something that's unique to you and then get that patented um, and then, and for sure get that trademarked. If you're not on Amazon, go through the process of getting your brand registered on Amazon anyways, and go through the brand registry 2.0 process uh, so that your brand is protected. Because believe it or not, probably people are ripping you off anyways. They're selling a product just like yours on Amazon. And more than likely, they're bidding on the Amazon platform for keywords that's your exact brand name. And they're just sucking up those sales and they're going to town. They're, they're loving all the paid media that you're building and, and sending to your Shopify store. And they're taking all of those organic sales on Amazon, totally free. They're paying zero acquisition cost, and they're making tons of money on your behalf. I had a client of mine, a competitor was making $750,000 a month off of the media spend they were doing with affiliates direct to their own website. You can imagine how pissed off they were when they figured that out. If your net margin is less than 15%, got to get that up. Uh, you know, th this is, there's no reason why an e-commerce brand can't be making 20, 25, 30, 35% net margin. Um, if you've got excessive debt on the balance sheet, like if you borrowed a whole bunch of money, um, that'll get paid off before you ever get a dime. So if you, if you know, whatever your cash component of an acquisition, let's say it's, you know, $500,000 and you've got a $300,000 line of credit with PayPal, PayPal is going to walk away with 300 grand before you get your 200 grand. So, you know, pay down those liabilities if you can stay away from, uh, from, you know, borrowing too much. If you're marketing, and your marketplace, like, so if you're on one platform and you've got one marketing method like Facebook ads, uh, is there any way that you can diversify that concentration? I know companies that are selling $10 million brands and, and more that are, it's a shop, you know, Shopify store and it's Facebook ads. People will buy that, but they would pay much more if it's on Amazon too. Uh, if it's got, you know, Instagram ads, you know, bring in some traffic to it, some TikTok, you know, influencer traffic, uh, you know, that sort of stuff. It, that's going to get you more money. Uh, and, and last but not, uh, not least, if you've got no repeat orders, what the heck? Like, why is the brand so crappy that no one will rebuy anything? You know, those are some things that buyers are going through uh, that, that scares them before they go jumping into a business.
The market demand for online businesses has never been hotter. The pandemic completely changed the world. There's institutional investors, private equity firms, publicly traded companies. There's employees at major tech companies that just want to become an entrepreneur. It, it's all over the place. People that are looking at e-commerce and the, as the nucleus and then anything around e-commerce digital marketing agencies, SaaS companies, technology companies, mobile apps, affiliate content sites, blogs, Instagram influencers, YouTube channels. If it's something digital that can point towards commerce done online, there are buyers interested. We've got over 150,000 buyers on our email list. We've got almost 25,000 buyers that have filled out NDAs. Those are non-disclosure agreements. They fill that out when they see a listing so that it shows high purchase intent. And then Pretty typically, when we launch a business for sale, we see well over 100 responses. The response is crazy. It's a seller's market. If you've ever thought about selling a business, now is the time to do it. If you have a question about how the business is valuated, I'm happy to do a free valuation for you. Uh, if you're just curious about timing and, and understanding the market and when's the best time to list, uh, feel free in any of those situations. Email me, nate at websitecloasers.com. It's in the description below. I'd love to talk to you.